Would you like to pay off all of your debt and achieve financial independence through business ownership and real estate investing so you can leave a legacy for your family? Today, I'm going to show you how to go from living paycheck to paycheck to becoming completely debt free and owning a seven figure property portfolio in just over a decade so you can achieve financial independence and build that legacy for your family. Now, I'm going to do this by sharing with you the number one millionaire money secret that wealthy families have been using for years to pay off their debts quickly, create massive leverage, and build seven-figure real estate portfolios in record time. And this will allow you to always win the banking game, regardless of the economy or market conditions. And the unfortunate truth around this is that most people are never taught anything about money. And sadly, because of this, most people only learn how to work for money, but never learn how to have money work for them. And that's why we believe this money secret is truly the key to achieving financial independence. Now, I'm also going to share with you the number one wealthy mindset shift that you need to make if you truly want to take control of your finances and navigate this rigged system. And, uh, and yes, okay, uh, the system is rigged, okay? You're, do you really think it's by chance that most people out there really struggle when it comes to debt? You know, they're buried in bills. You know, they're buried under, underneath a big mortgage. They have student loan debt. And, and this debt, you know, causes them to pay a huge amount of interest, you know, over to the big banks over the course of their lifetime. And, you know, of course, you know, you know, you're working a job, you know, working a W-2 job and, you know, you're paying a huge amount of your money is going right to the government in taxes. OK, and, and the toughest thing about all of it is that most people spend their entire life. OK, you know, working their tail off, you know, simply to retire completely broke. OK, with nothing left to pass down. And, you know, it's been said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And he who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. And so, you know, because of this, okay, most people are caught in a vicious financial cycle. I'll show you how to break that cycle so you can eliminate your debt and get ahead financially. And if you're here today, you know, and you currently have a mortgage, student loans, or really any debt that requires you to pay interest, I encourage you to stick around all the way until the end. I'm going to show you how you can legally, morally, and ethically pay off all of your debt, even a 30-year mortgage in a fraction of the time, okay, without refinancing or sending in extra payments. Uh, this vital strategy uh, will literally save you tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of interest that would normally just go to the big banks, depending on the size of your loans and, and of the size of your mortgage uh, over the course of your lifetime. So huge, huge uh, secret is going to be unveiled here today. You know, the truth is that most people make enough money to become financially free. They just don't know how to use their money right. Hi, I'm Mike Adams. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how our real estate investor group's proven education allows our students to pay off all of debt quickly and create massive leverage all while they learn to invest in real estate and acquire cash flow investment properties like clockwork and how you can do it too. And imagine what it would be like to be completely debt free and to become financially independent where you can actually have the opportunity to fire your boss or walk away from your job and truly start living life on your terms. Okay, that's what's possible when you have the right set of systems, the right frameworks to follow and the right team of people around you, you know, to support you and help you with implementation. Now, the top four categories of people this will help the most is people with a mortgage, other loans, or debt that they would like to pay off much faster, those that are looking to get out of, out of their nine to five jobs and looking to build a successful business of their own. This is also for individuals and business owners that want to maximize their current income and create a cash flow retirement. And it's also for new and experienced real estate investors looking for the best ways to create maximum leverage. So if you're here for any of those reasons, then you're definitely going to love what I'm going to share with you next. So let's pull back the curtain right now on this number one millionaire money secret. And the secret is actually a strategy that we call the velocity banking strategy. So what is velocity banking? 
Well, for starters, it's a more financially efficient way to use your current income to maximize your cash flow, create massive leverage, and help you pay off your debts in a fraction of the time using tools that are available at the bank that anybody can use. You just need to know how to use them properly. And unfortunately, this is the kind of stuff that's not taught in most schools. You know, what are we taught? We're taught the Pythagoras theorem, okay, and how important this triangle is to your everyday life. So we're taught this, but things as important as basic finance, okay, that is simply left out. And there is a reason for this, okay? And Henry Ford said it best. If people actually understood how this economic system works, there would be a revolution in a minute. And a critical point to make here is that everything that you know about the bank, you learned from the bank through their advertising, through their commercials, through, through their mailings, okay? And there is truly a certain way that the banks would like for you to think and act to increase their profits, okay? And always remember this, no matter what, banks are in business to make money. You know, let's think about the traditional banking model that we are all taught. And for the rest of this example, I'm going to be using the numbers of the average American household. So we did some research here. We put together this uh, illustration to show how this strategy works with the numbers of the average American house. So in this example, our average family has about $5,000 worth of net income coming into the house every single month. And when you get your checks, okay, you bring them to the bank and right away you start chopping up that pie. Okay, and this average American family has a mortgage. So we have a $1,200 mortgage payment, and that's attached to a $200,000 mortgage. We've got a 6% rate of interest there. Well, this average family also has a car payment. So we've got a $600 payment there, 6% interest on that loan. And uh-oh, okay, our average family also has a, a little bit of credit card debt. Okay, so we've got a $15,000 limit card here, and we've racked up about $12,000 balance on this card. Okay, and so the average interest rate on credit cards is about 21%. So we got a $600 payment on that credit card. Uh, we also have $1,200 here for your lifestyle. And again, this number will vary for, for, for people. But in this example, we're using $1,200 here. So think about your food, your phone, things like that. And that leaves us with about $1,400. That is typically just going into uh, some type of savings vehicle. Uh, normally, just the savings account at the bank there. Uh, you just kind of take whatever's left over from your checks, leave it in savings. And then throughout the month, you pull away from it. Uh, it might be going into a 401k at your job. It could be going into an IRA or a 5 29 for the kids, something like that. So in this example, we're using $1,400 there. And so what we see here, okay, and this is very, very typical, is you got $5,000 of income coming into the house every month, but every single nickel of it is accounted for, okay? In this example, we have zero cash flow, okay? Zero left over. And the bottom line is there's, there's an old saying that, that rich people are playing chess while everyone else is just playing checkers. You know, what you're seeing on the screen right now, folks, this is your chessboard, okay? And, and these are your pieces, right? And it's time to understand how these pieces move, right? When you look at this, what is the difference here? We got some lines of credit and we have uh, some loans. But what is the difference between a line and a loan? You know, for starters, these are the two primary products that banks offer to consumers. So we'll start with this one. You know, what is a loan? Uh, a loan is a one-way lending instrument, okay? It's, it's got a fixed monthly payment, and each payment consists of principal and interest, okay? Every payment will have some of it going to principal, some of it goes to interest, and it's also what's called on an amortized repayment schedule, okay? So those are the details on a loan. And this is the product that, again, most the banks most readily offer this product. Most people are familiar with loans, you know, student loans, mortgage loans, car loans. And the biggest problem with loans is that the principal is not liquid, okay? It is a one-way lending instrument. So even when, okay, you send in your car payment, even though part of that payment was principal, once you send it in, you no longer have access to the money. With loans, you can put, put money in, but you can never take money back out, right? And the banks have the ability to leverage your money. And this boils into how banks make money in the first place. You know, you might ask, you know, how do banks actually leverage your money? Well, a critical point to make here is that every time you pay the bank for your house, okay, or deposit money into your savings account, 
that money gets turned by 10 and then borrowed out again to somebody else. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Uh, Let me break it down for you like this. Here's a critical example. When you send in that $1,200 mortgage payment to the bank, the bank has the ability to go to the Federal Reserve. Okay, they call this fractional reserve lending. You can look this up. But the bank has the ability to go to the Federal Reserve and get a loan for $12,000, okay, at a fraction of a point in interest, okay? Now, they have to keep $1,200 of that loan on their ledger, okay? But what that does is that actually creates, okay, they can lend out that other $10,800 to somebody else at a much higher interest rate and make money. Okay, and and so you might be asking, you know, where did that $10,800 come from? Well, it came from thin air. Okay, it truly, it doesn't exist. Okay, it is merely a number on the bank's ledger. Okay, but the bottom line is this number, it puts more money in circulation. And the banks and the Federal Reserve are making money by charging us interest on nothing but numbers. Okay, you see, this is why banks always have the nicest buildings in town. You know, they have everybody's money and they get all the leverage. Now, and why is this a problem? Why am I fired up, all, all fired up about this? Is because it's your money, right? And if there is anybody that's going to be leveraging your money, shouldn't it be you? Now, is it possible for you to create leverage with your money like the banks? Yes. Okay, the answer is yes. Okay, we just can't do it with loans. So what is a line of credit? Okay, well, for starters, a line of credit is a two-way lending instrument. That means that it's revolving. Okay, you can put money in and you can take money out. And with the line of credit, there is only a payment if there's a balance. So if you have a zero balance on your credit card, of course, then there is no payment. And the payment reduces the principal balance and then interest is charged at the end of the billing cycle. And and also a credit card has regular, simple interest. Now, we are taught that lines of credit are bad. Line of credit is a tool. You know, you just need to know how to use the line of credit correctly. And most people make the mistake of using their lines of credit for liabilities. They use their credit card for, for big screen TVs or for that new iPhone. And that's why people, you know, say, stay away from credit cards. You're going to get in trouble because they use them for liabilities. You know, a critical point to make here, wealthy folks use lines of credit for emergencies, of course, and to acquire assets. Okay, so that's what we want to do with our lines of credit. And the great thing about lines of credit when you use them is that the principal stays liquid. If you send in a huge payment to your credit card, it creates additional available credit in that line. Okay, you have access to your money in the form of available credit in that line. And this gives you the ability to leverage your money instead of the banks. Okay, so again, that principle stays liquid. With the lines of credit, you can put money in and you can take money out. So the bottom line is if you aren't going to leverage your money for financial gain, the banks definitely will. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about lines and loans, we know that loans are amortized and they're also a one-way lending instrument where with our lines of credit, they just go with simple interest, but they're also revolving. We can put money in and we can take money out. But there's one more big distinction that we have to make here when we look at our chessboard because you look at these interest rates and and you always wonder why is that interest rate on the credit card so big, but yet the, the interest rate on our loans is so small. So you tell me, you know, what is the difference there in that interest? You know, if you had the choice of paying, you know, would you rather pay 6% interest on something or 21% interest? And most people would literally dive right on the six, okay? Simply because the number is smaller. But does that mean that you'll actually pay less in interest? You know, a critical point to make here is obviously both of these instruments have have simple interest, but loans have what's called an amortized repayment schedule. Okay, so that, that interest is amortized. And these are two completely different systems used to calculate interest. And so think about the difference here, right? I'm from Minnesota. Think about the difference here between the difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So these are both scales used to measure temperature. But did you know that one degree Celsius is actually hotter than 32 degrees Fahrenheit? 
So even though number is smaller, okay, it's actually hotter uh, than the larger number. So when you're thinking about your interest rates, anything that's on an amortized repayment schedule, think of that interest as Celsius, okay? And think about the interest on your credit card, that simple interest, as Fahrenheit. Because that Celsius, that amortized interest is much, much more expensive. Uh, let me show you. Uh, let's take a deeper look at that 30-year fixed mortgage. Okay, so, and if you have a mortgage, you know, you probably receive something like this in your paperwork where it shows you that at the beginning of your, of your mortgage, they have front-loaded the interest. Okay, so that's 6%. When you send in that very first mortgage payment of $1,200 on this loan, the, you know, only $200 is knocking down the principal. Okay, over $1,000 of that first payment is going directly to the bank in interest. Okay, and then the goal is over the course of the loan, it evens out. Um, and then on your very last payment, it would be the opposite, right? But the bottom line is this, guys. Most people never pay off their 30-year mortgage. If you've been making your mortgage payments on time every single month, you probably get a call from the bank around year four, five, or six, and they're going to say, hey, John, you know, great job paying your mortgage. I'll tell you what, we're going to save you $50 a month if you refinance your loan. Right, and you say yes, let's do it. I'm going to save 50 bucks a month, and what does that do? It resets the amortization. It resets the loan. It puts you back to the beginning where less of your money is actually knocking down the principal. You know, the bottom line, guys, is most people spend the majority of the time they live in their property in this end of the loan, where their money is just burning up in interest because of all this refinancing. You know, the bottom line, guys, is with this particular mortgage. Over the first four years, okay, you would actually send in uh, $57,000 worth of payments over the course of 48 months, and you would only knock down the principal by $12,000, okay? And 45000 of the, of the 57000 is pure interest going right to the bank. So, and you might be thinking to yourself, you know, is this accurate? Um, I found this right here. Uh, you can Google search uh, calculator.net. And, uh, and you can put in my numbers here. Here's an amortization schedule here. And it, and it shows you um, the first four years here and the amount of interest that you're going to pay, right? And you can put in my numbers. So you can you can check this out yourself, okay? You can put in the $200,000 loan, 6% uh, interest. I started it right here, uh, January of 2019 here. And uh, as you can see, I rounded the uh, payments. So we're using a $1,200 payment in our example here. It's over the course of this loan. Okay, let's say you did make all, all those payments for 30 years. Congratulations. You will have paid over $231,000 worth of interest on this loan. That's a lot of interest. So now that you know the difference between a line and a loan and how brutal amortized loans are, you know, let's take the next step here and let me share with you the number one wealthy mindset shift that you need to make. If you truly want to take control of your finances and navigate this rigged system. And again, and you might ask, you know, who rigged the system? Uh, well, again, I alluded to this earlier, but of course it's your, your, your friends right over there at the banks, you know, corporations, and of course the government and, and why, you know, why would they rig the system? You know, to make money, of course. And uh, the unfortunate truth guys is that the government and the big banks, you know, they've been grooming you since you were a kid to get used to giving them your money. You know, think about this. You know, since you guys were a kid, let me know if you heard some of this language growing up. You may have heard things like, you know, what you need to do in life is you need to go to school. You know, get good grades, get a degree so you can get a great job, you know, work your way up. Or maybe you heard something like this. You know, the only two things that are certain in life are death and taxes. Or, you know, don't take risks. You know, make sure you always play it safe. You know, how many of you guys heard this kind of stuff growing up? Is we call this old school mentality. Right. And, and this scarcity language, you know, what this does is it starts to force you down a certain path in which you think you need to live your life in order to be successful. And guys, what is down that path? You know, many of you guys went to school, you got the good grades, you got the degree, you got the great job. And, you know, we begin to develop, you know, what we call in our group, the employee mindset. Okay. And the big problem here with the employee mindset is that we only learn how to exchange time for money, okay? We only learn how to live on a cash system, okay? And we only learn how to use cash as currency. 
And, and that's why we relentlessly focus on accumulating cash. And that's why you see most people out there chasing a dollar. The critical problem with the employee mindset is that simply put, there is no leverage. Okay. We are literally exchanging hours for dollars. And the minute that you stop exchanging those hours for dollars, okay, obviously the dollars are going to stop coming in. Okay. If you don't go to work, you're not getting paid. Now, do wealthy folks want to accumulate cash? Yes. You know, of course they do. Right. But that is not their focus. Okay. To the wealthy cash accumulation is a byproduct of the two things that wealthy folks focus on creating relentlessly, which are cash flow and leverage. Okay. So what is cash flow? Cash flow is your income minus expenses. Okay. So it's the money that you have left over after all the bills are paid. That's your cash flow. And in, in this world, you know, we're taught to focus on what we make, right? Our gross income, the annual salary or that hourly pay, you know, not so much about how much we keep. And this is truly the mindset shift that we need to make here. You see, wealthy people think completely different. You see, they have what's called a wealthy mindset. You see, wealthy mindset individuals, they aren't interested in exchanging time for money. You know, wealthy mindset individuals are not interested in using cash as currency. You see, the wealthy people, you know, they use cash as velocity to pay off debts quickly and reduce interest payments. And then they create leverage in lines of credit. And they then use that leverage as currency to pay for their lifestyle, their monthly expenses. And since the lines are just simple interest, the wealthy leverage them to pay off their expensive amortized loans much, much quicker and save a boatload of money in interest. You see, wealthy mindset individuals know that it doesn't make any sense to send extra cash to loans because they lose all their leverage and give it all to the banks. Wealthy mindset individuals also know that, you know, they don't make money uh, using savings accounts at the banks. They pay very little interest. And if you're bleeding uh, amortized interest out the back door, it's a net loss to keep your money in a bank safe. You know, yes, you want to have a, a liquidity fund. There's other tools to use uh, that grow a little bit greater rate uh, than a bank savings account. So what would the wealthy do? And what would the wealthy do with this average American household scenario? Well, now that you know the difference between a line and a loan and the importance of cash flow and the power of leverage, let me show you how this powerful strategy works. And again, let's put our chessboard back up here. So the first thing we want to do is start applying our wealthy mindset. And again, remember those two things that wealthy folks focus on creating relentlessly are cash flow and leverage. And in our scenario here, we don't have any cash flow. So the first thing that a wealthy folks are going to do is they're going to look at this and say, okay, where can I create some leverage so I can create some cash flow? And they know if they send extra money to the loans, they lose all the leverage. So wealthy folks see that line of credit as the only place that they can create additional leverage. So what would the wealthy do with this scenario is they would take that entire $5,000 every single month and send every penny of it directly to the line of credit. Now, hang with me here and let's see how this changes our numbers. So now over the course of the month, if you're sending all of your money to the line, that is going to eliminate that $600 credit card payment that we've been accounting for. So we can take that $600 number and add that directly to our cash flow. Also, since we've now learned a little bit more about brutal amortized loans and how much interest we're actually paying on those loans, right now, uh, again, the goal here is to eliminate the debt, the debt here in the fastest way possible. So we're not going to be leaving our money in the bank savings account here uh, where it's really not working for us. It's working for the banks. And we're going to take that 1400 bucks and add that number directly to our cash flow. And so all we've done here is made a little shift in what we're doing with our money. Okay. And our numbers have changed a little bit. So we still have the same $5,000 worth of income coming into the household. We have $3,000 worth of expenses going out and we have now a $2,000 per month cash flow number. Okay. A critical point to make here is you want to think of your line of credit as your new checkbook. Instead of writing checks from your checking account, you're going to use the line of credit to pay for your expenses. Um, and you're going to do so using the line instead of sending checks from your bank account. Let's play this out here. Month one is going to come rolling in 
and you're going to send all $5,000 to that line of credit. So we started off with a $12,000 balance. You hit it with five grand, it's going to knock it down from 12 to seven. Then you're going to use the line of credit, like your checking account, to pay for all of your expenses. And so we got $5,000 going in and $3,000 going out. And what we see here in month one is a reduction in the balance by our cash flow number, which is $2,000. So we went from 10, or 12 to 10. Uh, month two comes rolling in, we're going to go 5,000 in, 3,000 out. Okay, month three rolls in, 5,000 in, 3,000 out. Okay, and every single month it's going down by our cash flow number. And now a lot of folks, when they're seeing this strategy for the first time, say, well, Mike, you know, I can't do that. You know, what if I send, if I send all my money to the line of credit, what if there's an emergency? What if the tires go out of my truck? You know, how am I going to cover that? What is this right here? Okay. On this credit card, we have a $15,000 limit. And at month four here, you know, we've knocked it down to a $6,000 balance. We have $9,000 worth of leverage on this line. Okay, so if there was an emergency, you'd be covered leveraging this line of credit. But again, no emergencies here. So we're going to keep rinsing and repeating that, where we're going to hit it with 5,000 in, 3,000 out every single month. And simple math here, 12,000, it's going to go by, down by our cash flow number every single month. We're going to pay off this entire line of credit in six months, leveraging this strategy. Now that the line of credit is paid off, you know, what's next? Well, remember that expensive amortized mortgage that we showed you? You know, let's take a chunk of that amortized debt and move it over to the simple interest line of credit. Essentially, transforming the interest that you are paying on that debt and making it much easier to pay off. And so what you do is you would take that line of credit and uh, write yourself a check uh, and send it $12,000, principal only, directly to your mortgage company and essentially you know grabbing a chunk of that amortized principal and bringing it over to the simple interest line of credit we're going to start leveraging that velocity banking strategy where we're going to have all five thousand dollars every month hit that line of credit you know all of our expenses on the line of credit so three thousand out five thousand in three thousand out and uh, same numbers here, so we uh, twelve thousand. It's gonna go it'll go down by our cash flow number every single month, and we're gonna eliminate this twelve thousand dollars here in the same six months that it took before, leveraging this powerful strategy. And you know the beauty of doing something like this. Okay, the one cool thing about loans, right, is that when you prepay the principal, right. Imagine doing a maneuver like this first day on your mortgage you would literally be able to drop that balance, you know, from 200,000 right down to 188. And the beauty of doing this is that when you prepay the principal, you are no longer required to pay that interest, okay? And that's why this money secret is truly the key to achieving and unlocking financial independence. And a lot of folks too will ask, well, Mike, okay, so that's, that's, that's a huge savings on, on the interest or the, absolutely, that's great. I can you know, you know, save that money, but what about the interest on the credit card? Okay. And here's the, the, the formula on that. And if we carried the 12 for six months, okay. And obviously we're not, cause we're, we're knocking it down by two every single month. But if we did, that would be just under $1,300 in interest over the course of six months. To get, and, and again, that was for $12,000 worth of principal reduction in your mortgage. To get that same $12,000 reduction, it took us four years worth of payments. You had to send in $57,000 worth of capital, but you had to pay $45,000 worth of interest to get the exact same principal reduction in your loan. So, I mean, if you're using bank's money, you're always going to pay some interest. So you tell me, what would you rather pay? You know, $1,300 uh, in interest to get that kind of principal reduction or 45000 to get the exact same principal reduction in your mortgage. That's a huge savings, folks. And bottom line is you could rinse and repeat this process. And again, you know, every six months, grabbing a $12,000 chunk, bringing it over to the line of credit, using the strategy to use all, all your money working for you to knock it down by your cash flow number. Rinse and repeat that strategy uh, every six months. And uh, this average American family, uh, if you run this scenario out, would actually pay off their credit card, the car loan, and their 30-year mortgage in about six years, leveraging this strategy. They were able to break the shackle of debt 
And they were able to do so without sending in extra payments, without refinancing or increasing their income or even living on beans and rice. You know, we were able to keep the lifestyle number the same. We simply use this velocity banking strategy. And so now that we're six years down the pipe, you know, our numbers have changed a little bit. You know, we've been able to get rid of the mortgage. So the great thing about not having a mortgage is we no longer have a mortgage payment. So we could take that $1,200 and add it directly to our cash flow. Uh, it's also six years later, so we've been able to pay off the car loan. So we could take that $600 and add that directly to our cash flow. And so now we still have that same $5,000 coming in and the same $1,200 going out for your lifestyle expense and a $3,800 cash flow number. You love this quote by Bob Hope. He says that a bank is a place that will lend you money if you can prove that you don't need it. And uh, so the great news here is uh, this is obviously a great credit scenario, okay, for this average family. And so it's very easy to see how, you know, banks like this kind of behavior, Okay, if you're a good saver and you're someone that saves money at the, in the savings account at the bank, you know, you're never going to get you know, an extra line of credit from them for being a great saver. However, if you start paying down lines of credit quickly like this, they reward that kind of behavior. You know, they're going to increase the limit on your credit card. And again, they're hoping that you're just going to rack it back up, get back in trouble, you know, buy some more liabilities so that way they can get you for more interest, right? But now you have your wealthy mindset and you know that lines of credit, they're not for liabilities. They're for assets and emergencies. That's it. And so, you know, six years down the line here, you know, for this average American household, you know, honestly, life is pretty good, right? We've been able to clean up the debt here. We're in a really good credit scenario, um, but we still have one big problem. Okay. When you look at this scenario, right? The big problem is right here, this five grand, because still, you know, that $5,000 is coming from your job. And what if... You know, your hours got reduced, your bonuses get cut, or, or you get laid off or worse, even terminated at your job. You know, what do we know about corporate America is that, you know, for any reason at any time, you know, the boss or the company could let you go. So what would the wealthy do about this? So that way they could protect themselves from that happening to them. Well, remember guys, lines of credit are for assets and emergencies. Let's use the leverage in the line of credit to accumulate additional cash flow producing assets. Now, remember at the beginning, I said I would show you how to go from living paycheck to paycheck to becoming completely debt free and owning a seven figure property portfolio in just over a decade. Let's leverage the tools that we have available here to create financial independence. And so again, we have this credit card with a $25,000 limit. Okay, let's increase our wealthy mindset. Let's learn more about real estate investing. You could use that line of credit to write yourself a check $20,000 and, and use it to buy one of these. You could pick up your first single family rental property. And this property here has a market value of $120,000. You put down 20, so we have a mortgage uh, left over of $100,000. And this particular property is gonna cash flow $400. So we add that $400 to our cash flow, bringing us up from 38 up to $4,200 per month in cash flow. You're gonna start leveraging that velocity banking strategy. And now you have $5,400 per month of income hitting this line of credit and $1,200 in expenses coming out. Again, you have a renter in that property making the debt service payment. So again, barring emergencies, you would knock this down by our cash flow number every single month. You pay off this first 20 grand in about five months, leveraging this strategy. And again, guys, this is 20 grand worth of mortgage principal reduction. Okay, so versus it taking 10, 15 years to pay this off, you know, so you can imagine the interest that was saved here on this. Okay, rinse and repeat that. Grab, write yourself another $20,000 check and grab another 20 off that mortgage. Okay, you can run the numbers here and this first rental property will be paid off. Using this process, again, barring emergencies, you pay off this first rental property in about two years, leveraging this strategy. And so that's going to change our numbers. We get rid of the debt service there. It's going to bring our cash flow number up by 600, bringing us up to $1,000 in cash flow on this property. And that's going to change our cash flow number from 42 up to $4,800 per month now in cash flow. So now is one little rental property going to bring us to financial freedom? You know, in most markets, probably not. Okay. But, but what else can we do here? You know, what other tools do we have available, right? What about your primary residence? 
Okay, uh, can we leverage that to achieve financial independence? You know, yes, we can. Okay, so we're about eight years down the line here in our scenario. And let's let's put the primary residence up here. Again, you have no mortgage on this property. You know, it's eight years down the line. And let's just say it's maintained its $200,000 value. Again, we're eight years down the line. It's probably gone up in value. You know, it's very easy that you could walk into a bank. And so we're going to get a home equity line of credit. And so it's easy to see we can get a 60%, you know, line of credit here, $120,000. You know, how many $20,000 checks can you write with a $120,000 HELOC? Well, you can write six of them. Okay. And uh, again, you can pick up six more single family rental properties. And again, assuming the same numbers as above. Okay. Well, we're going to get $400 in cash flow per door. That's an additional $2,400 per month in cash flow coming into your life and into your business. You know, the credit card itself was paid off down to zero, okay? Uh, so we can sweep that off to the side, put that in the drawer. Because uh, now we're playing with this much bigger line of credit. We got this big HELOC here and you just racked up 120 grand uh, worth of debt, this line of credit. You know, what are we gonna do? We're gonna start leveraging this Velocity Banking strategy. Where again, all of your income is gonna hit this line of credit. And again, you have renters in these properties making the actual debt service payments on the properties, knocking down the debt there as well. But it's going to go down by our cash flow number, barring emergencies. It'll go down by our cash flow number every single month, the $7,200 per month. You know, in a nutshell, guys, um, you would actually sweep down this $120,000 in about 16 months, leveraging this strategy. And then you would just, you know, go ahead and rinse and repeat. Uh, bottom line, guys, is you would pay off these six properties in about five and a half years, leveraging this strategy. And that would give you a total of seven rental properties paid off free and clear in just over 13 years without changing your spending habits, without earning additional income, right? We, we use this, you know, keeping everything the same. You know, we simply started using this velocity banking strategy and learning how to leverage a line of credit. And so here's how we ended up at the end of the scenario, guys. You know, using this velocity banking strategy, we ended up with a cash flow number of $10,800 in monthly cash flow. You know, at this point, you could easily walk away from your job and still have $5,800 per month in cash flow coming in the door. But there's also additional side benefits uh, here as well uh, with how we've structured this. You know, you now have over $1 million in leverageable assets. Okay, all these properties are debt free. So you could, you could leverage them to acquire additional lines of credit. You could keep going and keep accumulating more property. Okay, you're getting incredible tax advantages like depreciation. Uh, you're building a legacy for your family. Imagine handing down a portfolio of properties and you're creating a more secure cash flow retirement for yourself compared to the cash accumulation model that we've all been taught. You know, if you wanted to have anywhere near uh, 10 grand a month of retirement, you would have to save up about $3.4 million to be able to pull off 10 grand a month over 20 years in retirement. You know, at your current rate of retirement savings, you know, do you have a, enough time left to get to where you want to be financially? My good friend Mitch Nelson says, when knowledge increases, behavior changes. And now that we have increased your knowledge, you can change your financial behavior to maximize your cash flow, create massive leverage, so you can save thousands of dollars in interest using the Velocity Banking Strategy. Mm -hmm.